The following is a today's THV special presentation. To help the Razorbacks cope with a setting like this, they're using a setting like this. Lengthen the back of the body. And the hogs the practice yoga. Well, we've done yoga before. We started it with Corliss Williamson's team uh, back in uh, the year that he was a sophomore. Why did they wait so long? Cliff Riggs teaches at the yoga studio of Little Rock. Basketball players, like any person in sports, again, they're doing the same kind of action over and over. Dribbling, running. But see, yoga is balancing. Where you are too strong, we give you flexibility. Where you are too flexible, we give you strength. And Nolan has seen it work on his players. You know, we got a kid like Larry Satchel who couldn't stand straight up and touch his toes. (laughs) Now he can. What got Nolan's attention was a guest the instructor brought in. Uh, she brought in a, a, a man that was like in his 50s who had started yoga when he was, say, 40 years of age. And I saw what a magnificent, how he could move. And he had mm. told me that he couldn't even touch things or couldn't do this. Uh, and then I got excited about that. Nolan I, I would be impressed with Cliff. He's 63. I tried some of the things that they do. I do them myself. Uh, I, I maybe take two or three things and try to work on them myself. Nolan would do well to practice the breathing exercises designed to produce peace of mind. He's stretching the heels out. Bringing bring flexibility, the the which protects out. against injury. That's what it's all about for the hog. But it only goes over, so far. Right so if I did it, could I dunk it? <laughs> it has nothing to do with dunking. <laughs> <laughs> The kids loved the Razorback locker room. It was carpeted. It was roomy. First, I got them organized. Y'all want to learn a football play? Well, everybody gather around. Then I taught them the basics. What is this? You're a genius. Great. Once that was established, I could advance to more complicated subjects. Okay, now we're going to learn a football play, and then we're going to go outside and run it on. We're going to run the football play. On the out on the grass. Who wants to do this? Throw up hands. Well, that's this is tougher than I thought. All right. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is a play action pass to try and fool the linebacker into thinking there's a run and he won't drop back in double coverage and we'll be able to take the swing man on a play over the middle. The quarterback will fake fade, turn to the left, and throw post. Got it? Got it. Got, Got it. it. All right, let's go. Let's go. Ah, uh, they were fired up. All we needed now was to run the play. <laughs> Not everybody can be offense. Somebody's got to be defense. I am. You? I am a base. You're a base? <laughs> well, we don't. We don't have. Okay, you ready? Shelby, you ready? You say. Yeah. What? Oh, what? Fumble. It's a fumble. <laughs> that's not how that's supposed to go. Maybe bowling would have been good. <laughs> now when Houston Nutt walks across this field, he's got company. At all times, he's escorted by a state trooper, a state trooper who's known as Wynn Phillips. We had a chance to talk to this trooper about exactly what he does when he escorts Houston Nutt. I escort the coach onto the field. I escort the coach at the end of the game to the center of the field to shake hands with the uh, with the other coach. And uh, it really is just protocol. This started years ago when Bear Bryant was coaching Alabama. Someone in authority with a uniform on, people see that, they'll pretty well yield to you and get, get him onto the field and get him off of the field. The man who walks next to the football coach then becomes a part of the team. The feeling of the coaches will transfer and, and, and it seems like I have the same feelings. When, when they get up tight, I'm up tight with them. Believe me, he sees the agony. Anytime we lose, coach really takes it hard when we lose. He wants to win every ball game. I have a real big favor to ask. Well, uh-oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> what is it? I just want to walk around the trough one time with you next to me just to see what it's like for Houston Nunn. <laughs> I'll do that for you, Craig. Just I'll Would do you mind doing no, that? I'll, I'll I just want to see what it's like to have a trooper by your side. Let me get my raincoat. I'll be happy to. I tell you, there's nothing more secure than having a trooper at your side. I think I understand why they do it. Gee, I wonder if they'd ever have rent a trooper. 
One, two, one, two, three. It's an Arkansas Razorback. Well. Let's try this one. It's an Arkansas Razorback. This isn't working. 40 minutes later, our last street corner. It's an Arkansas Razorback. I guess it's a little early to call this legend, huh? Does it take a lot out of you to carry your child on your neck? Yes. Do you have to be in shape to do that? Pretty much. In a race between you two with your children on your neck, who would win? I don't know. There's one way to find out. Get set, go! <laughs> Autograph pictures, free autographs. Get your autograph pictures. He needs work. And then after I left Jonesboro, I was in radio for several years and decided that, you know, after 30 years of radio, I might want to go into TV. And maybe that was the career move I needed to take. And I know that later on, I will not regret having moved into television sports. And I know that a lot of people look forward to everything I'm about to do. So you would like to enter television as a career? Yes, I would. Take the mic. Look right at the camera and go back to you. Back to you. A majority of streets in this neighborhood have tennis names. Bjorn Borg, Tracy Austin, Wimbledon, Forest Hills. These people love their tennis. Of course, I play golf. I don't play tennis. Well, most of these people, they know that Goran Ivanisevic has won Wimbledon. I have no idea who that is. He needs to be a street name. Because I was wanting to know if I could change the name of y'all's street to Even Isovich Boulevard. Not our street. Well, you'd probably have to go through the association, but I don't think they'll go for it. Where do they live? It's not up to us. Yeah, but he won Wimbledon, and y'all live on Wimbledon, so I figured. Well, he, when was him when we got here? No, Barbie. we can't. Barbie. No. <laughs> what? No. Sure, he seems like a nice guy. You got a ladder I can borrow? Sure. Yes, Brian, we're on Dixon Street. This is the heart of Razorback Country. This is where all the spirit is in Fayetteville, downtown Fayetteville. And we're still a little bit over, oh, I'd say five hours from game time when we're taping this. Yes, it's tape delayed, an idea we got from the Olympics. But are they fired up inside the restaurant? How keyed up are the Razorback fans? I think you're hearing for yourself, but let's put them to the test. Let's go inside. All right, Razorback fans, how do you feel this afternoon? <laughs> Let's go in another restaurant, George's Heroes, and see what happens here. Come on. Razorback fans, are y'all ready for today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no problem. They're pumped up. But will they call the hogs inside a gourmet coffee shop where they're studying, reading books, and talking intellectual conversation? All right, is everybody in here fired up about the Razorback game? <laughs> hey, right, put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air. <laughs> Back to you. She's not very tall. She doesn't look like she could hit it that far. But you know what? She can beat any boy at her high school in El Dorado. And I'm shorter than all of them, too, and they can't stand it. 
She's Amanda McCurdy, who tomorrow begins her quest to win the AWGA State Stroke Play Championship. She already holds the State Junior Girls Championship, the high school overall, and the AWGA Match Play Championship. A win this week would mean she'd be the first ever to win those four titles in a year. On the verge of history, she doesn't show it. I'm real excited about it. Just hope I play well. <laughs> That's Amanda, cool under pressure. Emotionally, she's, she's very confident for her age. Um, she's got all the tools mentally that normally a 17-year-old doesn't have. And this is why she's won championships. The girl likes pressure. I do. I mean, I've noticed that sometimes. Some people have said that to me, that I seem to do better when it's more important. With the money getting bigger in professional women's sports, has she thought about going pro? My mom made me promise I'd get a degree just whenever I feel I'm ready and I feel my game's ready. I think I'm ready to sink this putt. I think you are. Go ahead. It's all you. Okay. Yeah. What yeah. I do wrong? Okay. You hit it too hard. She's cool. She's strong despite her size. She's going for history. Amanda McCurdy. Remember there. the name. <laughs> Rebsman Golf Course. Golfers say it's one of the most improved courses in the country. But they've got a problem. Canadian geese. They eat the grass and have, we've probably done about $20,000 worth of repair just from last year's. The maintenance crews have tried everything. There are sprays you can spray. There are uh, noise makers that you can buy. Uh, one of the best uh, alternatives is just keep them stirred up, uh, stir them up with carts. But the shoe method takes too many hours. What's the answer here? The most environmentally conscious solution we could find was a trained border collie, which is Fern. Fern, a border collie, and she's a specialist. She went through intensive training in North Carolina for two years. She loves to work. Walk up! Border collies are not great swimmers. The water takes getting used to. She draws a crowd. She is kind of our course celebrity right now, but. Once in the water, geese be gone, and off to Canada, or Kansas, or Chennault, anywhere but here. All she wants in return is the love. She's our first female crew member, and we have, we have a lot of guys that are really in love with Fern. It's fighting nature with nature. The goose numbers at Rebsman should be dropping, but if they return, Fern is ready. Oh yeah, one more thing. She cost $2,500. Wow, $2,500 for a dog just to chase geese. I got a dog. Look, I know you're bored, but look, let's get those geese. What do you say? Go get the geese, Lily. This way. This way. <laughs> Have y'all been having a really good time today, Rick? You bet. We've had a great time. Wonderful. You mind if I ruin it, J.D.? Go ahead. I mean, we've run a lot of holes. So okay, well, let me see what I could do, all right? Okay. You all watch golf on television, yes. and you know that the announcers all speak in hushed tones. Mm -hmm. Why? What good does that do? I would like to prove in front of a TV audience that a golf announcer can speak in a regular voice, and you can get just as good a result putting the ball. Do you all mind if I do that? We don't mind a bit. This putt is worth $200,000 should he be able to make it. Is that all? Huh? Is that all? Okay, this putt is worth $500,000, should he be? That's, that's more like it. All right, there we go. All right, he's looking at it. He's got the lie. Just needs to stroke it perfectly. Here's his putt. It's on line. It's headed to the hole. Oh! This 18-footer ought to go from right to left. He's watched it. He's got it read perfectly. Lanny's dead on. Oh! This is for $750,000. Joe's got it on line. Oh! The big enchilada. That's, oh. I think I've proved my point, don't y'all? That's right. You did, Craig. Mm -hmm. I think we've just changed the whole nature of broadcasting golf on television. <laughs>